Okay, we are live on Facebook. Next up, Instagram. Okay. Checking connection. We're live on Instagram. Hi guys. You'll it'll tell you when they start coming on. We're a little early. We're telling your followers. <laughs> Excited for yoga, guys. Hi guys. Thank you for showing mm -hmm. up. We're just getting all the devices set. So we got Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. and recording so you guys can access this later. Okay. Hey, Emily. Hey, Slow. Hi, guys. Yay. Oh, I miss everybody. I know. <laughs> You can hear us okay? Yep. I'll be from back here. I'll be loud. I'm always loud. Oh, do you want to let them know about the playlist? Oh, yes. So, um, because we don't want, uh, especially Instagram Live, to <laughs> shut uh, the flow down if they recognize um, copyrighted music, we're going to have no music in the room during the flow. So, if you saw earlier, both Four Corners and myself shared um, like an example playlist. Um, you're more than welcome to use that, kind of put it on in the background in your house while you're practicing. It's really like uh, kind of nice and mellow, but if you have something else you'd like to listen to, feel free to put that on. Um, but there'll just be no direct um, music coming through in the room that we're practicing uh, on. So if you haven't seen uh, the shared page for the playlist, go back into Four Corner Stories and you can find that pretty easily. And my profile name, um, if you're not looking through Four Corners Yoga, is uh, Rhythm and Light. Rhythm underscore and underscore light. Okay. All right, we got about four minutes. Mm -hmm. To make sure you're nice and warm up. Do you know your Spotify is still coming? I think it's just me other stuff. Okay. Yeah, you guys, if you want to check out Spotify for our playlist, um, Amanda's under Amanda Settler. There's a Four Corners one available, as well as um, Leanna C. Pierce, which a lot on there too. So we just won't be able to provide music so we can stay live. <laughs> Hi, Lucy. Good morning. Thanks for following. All right. I'm going to. Uh, within about three minutes, three minutes officially. Ready to start? If you guys want to start now, I'm up for it. Sound good, everybody? Okay. So, um, if any of you are joining uh, me today through your little screen, if you've never taken a class with me, my name is Amanda Settler. Um, I teach here at Four Corners. I also teach college students yoga over at Clovis Community, which I miss them very much as well. And I teach yoga at Meadowmark uh, Climbing Gym. So um, unfortunately, all of those places are not open. So I'm so grateful I get to meet with uh, everyone from Four Corners today on our screen. This is going to be a power vinyasa session. So as every time I teach a power vinyasa, um, you're always welcome to uh, bring me in the faster plate pace flow work at any point. You can modify any of the positions or poses or slow the flow down if you need to. Um, I think it's important to mention because all of us kind of worldwide are feeling um, a little anxious to say the least. There's a lot of unknowns, a lot of fear. And so the theme for the class that I'm teaching today with you guys, um, I wanted the theme to be about being brave. Being brave, or just that term brave, is very near and dear to my heart, which many of you who know me know that. Um, but the concept of brave, it doesn't mean that you're without fear or that you're fearless. 
Being brave means that even when you are afraid, even when you are anxious, worried, scared, you instead choose to continue living life, living life happy or living life uh, with joy or with peace or still choosing to move and breathe and practice and love. So that's our theme. I want us to be brave on our mask today. Be brave moving forward throughout the rest of this day, this week, this month. Who knows how long that needs to be our theme, but it's so beautiful. Um, it's something I want us to hold on to, okay? So for today's practice, hopefully you all can see me pretty clearly, um, we're going to begin right on our hands. As you kind of settle in, hands nice and flat, knees about to look apart, I want us to just find our breath. And as we find our breath, we're going to add movement. We're going to take a deep breath in and just really push our shoulder blades up towards the sky. Maybe a beautiful cat stretch. Exhaling, lowering that lower back down, lifting that head and chest. Into cow. We want you to repeat that. Inhaling, cat. Exhaling, cow. It's beautiful here. You can move at your own pace. You don't have to stay exactly with me. Maybe you want to move a little faster or a little slower. That is fine. We'll do it about two more times. Back and forth. Good. As you kind of wrap up this up and down motion, let's bring that spine to a nice neutral position, meaning my lower back nice and flat. Now I'm going to turn so that my fingertips are pointing to the long direction of my mat, and I'm just going to move through some nice circles, letting that weight really shift onto those hands. This is a beautiful way to kind of warm up those wrists, especially. If you haven't taken part in a power style session for a while, we want to make sure those wrists are nice and warmed up to be holding our body weight. I'm going to pause at the center, alternate direction. Now I'm still continuing those nice long inhalations and exhalations that I began when I started my practice. Once again, pausing at center, returning those hands to a forward facing position. On my next exhale, I'm going to settle into child's pose. Really let those fingers kind of creep forward. Forehead can come to mat. On our next inhale, we're going to roll up cat stretch. And just like before, we're going to kind of continue this movement. Exhaling back to child, inhaling. Back to cat. So you just can get this beautiful back and forth, back and forth, dynamic movement with your own breath. Let's do one more repetition. Beautiful. This time, as we come to our hands and knees, let's get our toes underneath us, straighten out our legs into a high plank using that belly to lift that hip upward to our first down dog. So now that we're in down dog, feel free to kind of move around in this pose. You don't have to be locked or feel like you're glued to your mat. You want to walk it out a little bit. Also, if down dog is still a relatively challenging pose, don't ever feel like you're forced into digging those heels down. You can always have to like bend in those knees with those heels lifted. Eyes looking up to our hands, we're going to do our first step, hop, or float forward up to our hands. As we exhale, let's take a beautiful forward fold. On our inhale, deep breath in. We're moving through kind of the traditional sun salutation. A, exhaling, hands flowing through heart center as we make our way back down to the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, hands on the mat, stepping or hopping back. Let's lower to the mat in our first chaturanga. This can be done on the toes or on the knees. 
Once we have contact with that mat, with our belly, we can push that ground away, listening to cobra or upward dog. And then exhaling back to down dog. That is one cycle that will definitely repeat, be repeated multiple times throughout this practice. You'll get very familiar with it. But from here, let's take a nice high plank. Just like in Chaturanga, at any point you want to drop to your knees during a high plank, you're more than welcome to. But I want to work on single leg balance in this high plank. So I'm just extending my left leg out. Notice my lower back is nice and flat. Belly button is pulled in. I'm going to hold for two more breaths here. One final inhale. On the exhale, let's take a single leg chaturanga down. Inhaling up to our cobra or upward dog. Exhaling back to down dog once again. A little bit of time here, maybe staying still or moving around, whatever your body needs. When you're ready, high plank. Lifting that right leg, breathing through a total of three breaths here. Inhale two. Inhale, three, and on that exhale, let's take that single leg chaturanga down, lifting up into upward dog or cobra before we make our way back to down dog. Now, the goal of this next sequence is to really get our heart rate up. So we're going to begin taking our right leg nice and high, three-legged dog. On the exhale, we're going to step it forward, planting that right foot, letting that back heel stay lifted, lifting into your warrior one of that crescent lunge. Now we're not going to stay here, we're going to go right back down, pushing those hands down, kicking it up to uh, three legged dog. We're repeating that, kicking it forward, inhaling warrior one, exhaling down. Inhaling, three-legged dog. Exhaling, kicking it forward. Inhaling, warrior one. Exhaling, back. So I want you to continue this at your own pace. Each time you kick it back, let that leg lengthen. Each time you raise up, really work on balancing and reaching for that feeling. Very simple motions, but they move the entire body, which aids in keeping that heart rate elevated. We're going to do two more. Guys are doing great at home, I'm sure. I'm getting a little winded, so hopefully you are. Last one. Now, as you kick it back to three legged dogs. Let's take that three-legged dog to single leg chaturanga. Lower it down. And let's lead through your vinyasa. Beautiful work. So down dog now will be our recovery. Now three breaths here. Beautiful. So now, just like before, left leg up, three legged dog. Exhaling, kick it forward. Inhaling, warrior one. And continue. We're doing a lot of these back and forth. Think of these repetitive movements the same way a mantra is repetitive as you repeat it over and over. Our body gets stronger and stronger. Memorize these emotions, and it becomes more and more comfortable for us to perform. Back and forth. Again, you guys are welcome to slow these motions down. Please start to get fatigued. Your feet do 
can speed them up. They're doing great. We'll do two more. Remember on that final one, we'll return to three-legged dog. This is our last step forward. Good, take it up, keep that leg elevated. Flatten that body out. Single leg chaturanga. And we're through our vinyasa. Beautiful job, guys. Make sure you use that hand up for recovery. And I'll also give you guys a chance to be off those hands so let's drop the knees. Sit back in a full child pose of recovery. Holding here. Two more breaths. Good work. Okay, so from this point, I'm going to keep my forearms on the mat out in front of me. And I'm going to raise up. So now, I'm almost in a tabletop position, but from my forearms. And I'm going to work on these areas right between the shoulder blades. So we're going to do um, scapular push-ups from our forearms. So we're going to like arch our back almost like we're doing cat stretch. And then release, pull those shoulder blades together, almost like we're taking out, back and forth. Good. Inhaling and exhaling with this movement. Now, if you want to make this a little more challenging, we can uh, make our spine nice and neutral first, step it back into a forearm plank, do the same thing. So you're welcome to keep those knees on the mat or work that scapular push up from plank position. The hips should generally be pretty still, mine are probably a little high. Back and forth, back and forth. If you finish one more set, let's walk those feet in, push those hips up. So we're in dolphin pose. Again, dolphin heels can be down, or we can bend those knees with those heels. And we're just going to go back and forth. We're going to push that ground away, down dog. Then we're going to drop back to down. Dolphin. Good. Push that ground away. Down dog. Drop those forearms. Just try to make as little change as possible. Only changes happening is in the forearm and hands. You're doing awesome. One more set. Beautiful job. That takes us back to our down dog. If you'd like to take a vinyasa here, feel free to do so. That'll set us back up into our down dog. We're going to get off the hands just a little bit. To do so, let's take our right leg nice and high. We can even bend that knee. Take an open scorpion dog if you'd like before we step it forward, laying that leg across our mat, making basically our shin parallel to the front of our mat. Now we're in a pigeon style pose, but rather than laying down in sleeping pigeon just to hold a stretch, we're going to float that back leg. So now we're kind of balancing. If you have blocks, you can use them on your head, hands. But what we're going to work to do, imagine we're like a bird, we have our wings out, we're going to fly down, or we're going to look up. 
Now you'll see my back knee is hovering or it's a floating leg. You're always welcome to drop that knee if you need a little more support. Because we are going to do a step back into side plank. I'm going to lift that right foot. Watch my balance. Step foot all the way back. And hold. Act like there's a string attached to our hips and it's lifting us up to that ceiling. Two more breaths. Beautiful. We'll let that right hand come down. High plank. Good shadow on that. Inhaling. Move our back then before exhaling. Sit down now. Let's take our left foot nice and high, do like a dog. Stepping it forward, exhaling, inhaling up to warrior one. Then we'll exhale, warrior two. Inhaling, reverse warrior. As I exhale back to my warrior two. And again, you have to revolve this pose. So if you know that was a little difficult, you want to shorten up that stance, you can. Once I'm completely revolved, you see it on my hips, end up almost going past square, holding that lens, watching that balance. I'm going to reach back, right hand goes up, left hand goes down. Back to that revolve warrior two, lifting that back heel. Releasing right hand down, left hand up, revolve side angle. And just like before, that right knee can come down, or if that leg's nice and straight, we're going to step back to full side plank. Three to five breaths here. And we'll really think about those hips being lifted. Eyes can look up through the hands or down at your mat. One more breath. Beautiful. We'll start that transition. Coming back to that high plank, shifting forward. Beautiful chaturanga down. Lift me to cobra or upper dog. Recovering once again in down dog, or feel free to take a child's pose if you want a little bit more weight off of the hands. On our next inhale, we're going to prepare to step forward. We're going to start with the left leg, so left leg up. Exhale, step it forward, planting. Good. We're going to come directly into warrior two. Now we're going to use both directions of our mat now for our next sequence. So as we hold warrior two, our next move is bringing these hands together and we're going to turn those feet to face forward. Hands come to heart center, shallow stretch. Slowly rolling up, hands come back out. Warrior two, opposite direction. Good. Now similar movement, only this time as those hands come together, we're going to dip that left side, come up. Warrior two. Good. Bring those hands together, dip to the right. Come up. Warrior two. Again, back and forth. Now you guys kind of know the pattern. And in your practice, this is a little different. I always get people, I'm not coordinated. I did it on the wrong side. It's fine, just be moving. You guys are doing amazing, I'm sure. So let's go ahead and come back to center. We're gonna pause here. We're gonna kind of walk those heels in. Let our arms come up. We call this like cactus arms, okay? And you may not have the most perfect goddess squat. Like my adductors are always a little tight, so it's not a big deal. But what we want to do is we want to do little pulses. We want to kind of like dip and up. 
And I'm going to try to bring that knee to either my calf or maybe my ankle. Get right back. Notice I never straightened up that left side. So when I return, I'm still in chair pose. Return to those legs or arms extended. So that belly of that is nice and tight. Tailbone tucked. We're going to do it again, only this time I'm extending my left leg. Again, not straightening my right, getting it out just enough to tap. Get it back out, pull it back into the chair. Beautiful. So we still have not released that chair pose. Uh, and bring it back to center. This time, let's choose to straighten that leg, taking a true warrior three. Warrior three can extend back with hands at heart center, hands behind up, behind us, and reaching for a block or hands fully extended. Wherever our hands have landed, let's bring them back to heart center. Let's tap that knee to that ankle two more times. Notice I'm still breathing through the exercise. Last one. When we bring it back to the chair. Ooh, really feeling those quads burn. And let's take a big breath and finally lengthen out those legs. Exhaling, hands to heart center. We'll let those hands go all the way through. Let's take a full sun salutation A here. Work, guys. This gives us a nice down dog. You can recover in. Eyes looking up to those hands. When you're ready, step or hop forward. Just like before, forward fold. And deep breath in, reach up. Hands to heart center, chair pulled. Again, out. Looking here about three to five breaths first. And you can start that transition, keeping those knees bent, going back, lifting our ankle, back, reach We're just going to the second round of this, just starting on our opposite side. And back extended. This time, let's take true warrior three. Let's straighten that leg up. Take our left foot back again. And, ooh, as I do this, can be upper center, can be extended, or can be in and out in front. Good. Can we tap that ankle one more time? Last one. Uh, and back to chair, and straighten up. Big, beautiful deep breath in, exhaling through our vinyasa. Good work, guys. Inhale, flat back, and stepping or hopping back. Beautiful job, guys. Let's go ahead and sit back in chair, or sorry, not chair, definitely not chair, child. <laughs> Letting that forehead rest on that mat. Even from this position, we can kind of walk our hands maybe out to the left just a little bit. And out to the right. Okay. 
and back to center. We're not completely done with our high intensity movement. I'm going to roll myself up, take my dog once again, and hop right back to my hands. So, earlier we held chair just like so. I want to give you guys an option to add to this. We did so much of our movement. It's limited. If we're sitting at a desk for large periods of time, working from home, not getting out, getting that blood pumping nearly as much. So I want to give us a chance to really let go in our really high intensity way. So if we're in this chair pose, I want us to reach it back and we're going to get hot. Good. We're going to do 10 total. The height of the hops is up to you, but I want us landing. Stop. Last one. And hold in our chair pose. Let those hands come down. Hop it back. Down dog. Hop it forward. Chair hop. Hop it back. Down dog. Hop it forward, chair hop. Hop it back, down dog. Hop it forward, chair hop. Two more. Hop it back, down dog. Hop it forward, chair hop. Last one. Hop it back, down dog. Hop it forward, chair hop. Hold it. Everybody's nice, got this. Control that breath. Breathe through the pain. And I'm going to let us release all the way down to our mat. Beautiful work, guys. Just for the record, those were yoga burpees. They weren't traditional burpees. I'm going to hear that component. We added that down dog in. Let's extend those hands out. We're going to do like a really slow release in a sit up. Okay, so as I'm making my way down the mat, I want to feel each vertebrae. Kind of touch down, down, down. Unless we're nice and flat, hopefully you guys can see me on the screen and I'm not cut off. I'm going to extend those hands up. Big stretch. And then slowly roll up. Again, try to keep those feet flat. Let that spine. And lift really gradually one more time. Release it down. Reach it back. And as we exhale, reach it forward. Good. So I'm going to take a half Navasana here. Let me try and get better for everyone who's watching. Hands can be out in front or above my head. Now, this is a little less traditional because what I'm going to do, I'm going to straighten that leg out. It's not resting, it's hovering. So I'm going to pull it in. Straighten out, pull it in. Chest should remain open. We're still breathing through these exercises. Good job. One more on either side. If you're fatiguing, hands can come to heart center or down to the mat. Once again, we'll release. I'm going to bring my hips right close to my feet now. Okay, as I release back down to the mat. Once my lower back is on the mat, I want to make sure I hold or push that lower back down, allowing my hips to tilt ever so slightly. Because now that I'm on the mat, I'm going to lift into a gentle bridge. I just want to feel a nice stretch through the front of those hips. And on our lower, we're going to lower really gradually. Five, four, three, two, and one. Once those hips are down, I'm going to take a baby step out. 
Lift again, all the way up. Breathing through this bridge. And as I start to lower, again, five, four, three, two, and one. Third time, baby step out. See how my feet are getting farther and farther away from my hips? Lift again. One, two, three, four, five. Let's start that lower. Five, four, three, two, and one. Baby step out. So this exercise is a little time consuming since we take so many steps, but let's lift. You can see the farther away your feet get from the, your hips, the more your hamstrings and glutes are having to work. So it's lower. Five, four, three, two, and one. I'm a little out of mat space, but I might be able to get one more step in if you want to try. Let's lift. And five. Four, three, two, and one. So now we backtrack it. This is an exercise that is so repetitive. It's easy to remember to do at home on your own. I'm lifting up for five. And I'm slowly lowering for five. So it's a great strengthener for the back of the leg, something that if you're used to using like body weight or not body weights but using like gym equipment to train your hamstrings this is a great way to train your hamstrings through yoga and while at home so i have probably one more set after this even though this is a great exercise and definitely strengthening that back side of the body it's also giving me a chance to kind of let my heart rate gradually come down. It's a little easier to control that heart rate back to normal. And so it's a great exercise to end with. Beautiful job. So from here, let's take our right ankle, let's place this over our left knee. We're going to straighten our left leg all the way up. You can see my head, shoulders, lower back, everything's nice and flat. This foot's pointed right up towards the ceiling. And from here, I'm going to lower that foot all the way down to the mat. And then I'm going to lift it just a little bit beyond what would be considered 90 degrees. So bring it a little closer to my body. You can hear my voice because those abs are having to work a little harder. So I'm going to release it down. I'm going to pull it back. Inhaling as that leg releases. Exhaling as I pull that leg back. And this will be our final one. Now before we do that opposite side, I'm going to release my left foot down to the mat. Let that right knee cross completely over my left and allow those legs to kind of walk and fall to the left hand side, allowing for this real gentle uh, and relaxing lumbar stretch. Right hand extending out. Eyes can look to the left, or if you want that deeper, more intense stretch, you can look to the right hand side. Slowly bringing the weights back to center. I want to allow for us to get that one additional abdominal exercise on this opposite side once again. So hands come alongside of us, right leg goes straight up, and we're going to lower it down. Imagine you're trying to glue your entire upper body all the way down to the lower back. 
gluing it to the mat as you do with it. Inhaling as those legs fall. Exhaling as you pull it in. We'll do one more. Good work. Bending that knee, planting that foot. I'm going to show you that second stretch that we entered on our opposite side already. Working to stretch that outer hip. Letting that lumbar spine kind of lengthen and lift off that mat, keeping that upper chest and shoulder blades nice and flat against the ground. Beautiful extension through that left hand side. Now, following a power class such as this, Sometimes you have to be a little bit more intentional about making sure the body has released and relaxed any of its tension. Muscles have been on, they've been working and moving quickly. We want to be mindful as we move towards Shavasana about intentionally releasing any hidden stress. So let's bring our legs back to center. If you'd like to lay in traditional corpse pose, you can lift them out. I want us to take a deep breath in here. And as we exhale, imagine we're doing a mental check, starting from the crown of our head, moving through our shoulders, our mid-back, our hips, our legs, our ankles, looking for any tension that may be hidden. Really find release back into the mat as if that tension is melting into the ground. You can repeat this mental check as many times as you feel necessary. But once that check is completed, you're prepared for a comfortable shavasana. You can continue staying in corpse pose or your Shavasana pose of choice for as long as you would like. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to transition. I'm going to slowly roll onto my side. Push back down the way. Make my way to a seated upright position. My kind of uh, pose of choice is generally lotus pose. Crossing those legs, palms open and up. And those eyes closed, body relaxed. Returning to the simplest thing we possibly can, which is our breath. Breathing in, nice long inhalation, and then exhaling out again with any remaining or hidden stress. On our next breath in, let's return to the purpose of this class. Let's breathe in the mantra, I am brave. Exhaling out that bravery to the world, to our friends, to our neighbors. Again, breathing in, I am brave. Letting that deep, deep into our hearts and our minds during this time. At this point, we can open our eyes, turn our hands to our center. Everyone, this was super fun to do. I felt like you were right in the room with me. So thank you so much for watching, for practicing. Please continue practicing at home. I hope you enjoy these videos. As always, namaste. <laughs> I don't know how to clap. <laughs> we're learning, we're learning. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining. We appreciate you guys so much. Um, stay tuned for a link to some of these recorded videos and also stay tuned for a live schedule. We're working on it. Um, just making sure people can do it either from the comfort of their home or from here. So uh, more to come. Thanks again.